Earlier uh, this week, John Pop went out to the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia, to speak with senior curator Phil Schreier for the Curator's Corner. Take a listen. We're here at the National Firearms Museum here at NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia, with Phil Schreier, senior curator of the National Firearms Museum. And Phil, this is a story you told me, you started to tell me out at the National Police Shooting Championships in Albuquerque, and I liked it so much, I said, stop, Phil, we're going to come out here. And I want you to tell us the story of what you're standing in front of, the, uh, the range here, the shooting gallery at the National Firearms Museum. Thank you, John. Uh, we appreciate that. This is the uh, shooting gallery in the museum. It's one of our favorite exhibits. It gets a lot of uh, positive feedback. Uh, the uh, exhibit itself, uh, the, the gallery, uh, was made in 1903 on Coney Island itself by the F.W. Mangles Company. And when it was originally manufactured, it was powered by steam. And in 1918, it was converted to electricity. It was a very popular Coney Island attraction, and uh, exhibits like this traveled all over the country with carnivals and circuses and uh, boardwalk attractions. And you would go up, pay your, uh, as the signs here say, pay your 25 cents, uh, and you'd get a rifle full of uh, uh, 22 caliber short ammunition. And it was a special type of projectile. It was a, uh, it was a, a gallery round which was made out of compressed lead particles. It wasn't solid cast like most bullets. Uh, so that when it hit the uh, uh, targets, it was crumble ammo and it would, it would literally dissolve once it hit the, uh, hit the targets. Uh, not quite a healthy working environment for the carnies that had to endure that eight hours a day or however long, uh, but tons of fun for kids. And uh, this particular piece was donated to us uh, by General Dr. Uh, Paul Kopsch from Ohio, and uh, the, a member of the Ohio Gun Collectors Association. And uh, we restored it after he donated it to us. It had stayed in his garage uh, at his house in Ohio. And every 4th of July, he would clear out the garage and everything that was piled up in front of the uh, gallery and have a big picnic for everybody in the neighborhood, and especially the kids. And uh, they would come over, and uh, he would let them take shots at the, uh, at the shooting gallery. And he kept it in good working order. Uh, however, uh, the uh, choice of ammunition and calibers wasn't strictly adhered to during, the, uh, during these Fourth of July events. And as you can see in some close-ups of some of the original ducks that are on the, uh, on the thing, they were shot at with 38s and 357s and even bigger calibers than that. No fact, crumble there. No crumble there. It was all solid cas lead and copper jacket in many cases. Uh, some of the ducks look like they've been through an acid rain. Uh, those that were really in bad shape, we actually had cast uh, new ones in New York. Uh, took one of the original ones that was in good condition, had a mold made, and had some uh, recast from the original, uh, original shapes. And uh, they worked pretty good. The, uh, the back of the exhibit uh, was completely redone because that had been almost shot full of holes. Uh, and we replaced it with a much lighter sheet steel. Of course, we're not going to be shooting it in the museum, so we didn't need armor plating uh, when we restored it. Uh, the colors are as best we could come up with uh, from mostly black and white photographs of these in, in action. And we actually found an original Winchester Gallery banner uh, at the uh, Maryland Arms Collector show in Baltimore one year and picked that up for great price uh, and have that hanging next to the uh, gallery. Uh, we actually have a black and white photograph of of the original poster hanging in front of the gallery in, at one of the boardwalks. And we have our collection of Winchester pump action 22s uh, laid out just like they would be on the, on the Carney's table. Uh, and they, uh, they, they get a great deal. Uh, when this is working uh, well, and right now it's undergoing some minor repairs, but hey, a no, little- So you, you've been shooting at it, have you? No, 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 no. no. Oh, yeah. just, just maintenance, basically. <laughs> just 10 years. <laughs> it's, it's once every decade maintenance job. Uh, Tell us a little bit uh, of the story of, of how it got here and what you had to do, basically, to get it into this space. The, uh, the shooting gallery itself was in fairly decrepit condition by the time we got it. Uh, it had uh, not only been in the general's garage for, for decades, uh, but then sat in an open area uh, for years before it got uh, transported to uh, our restoration uh, facility in upstate New York. Uh, Dan and Glenn Chapman uh, worked on uh, restoring it uh, for us. 
Uh, we brought it down here on a flatbed truck. Uh, we were able to put it into this space by going through a door uh, outside of the museum, the only door that comes into the museum from the outside of the building, uh, when there was nothing here but concrete slab floor and ceilings. And when we uh, put it into position and set it down, uh, we basically uh, locked the door behind it, uh, sealed it off with armor plating so nobody could get in through the door, and uh, then built the museum around the gallery. It was the uh, first artifact in the museum, literally. It was here covered in plastic while the workmen uh, demoed the existing walls, put up new uh, aluminum stud, drywall, and then built the museum around it. Wow. So literally, you could not get the gallery out of here without tearing the it's, museum apart to get it out the door again. It's as much a part of the museum as the floor and ceilings it's here. It's integral. Yeah, and, and, and interesting, you talked about what decrepit shape it was in. Now it's just beautiful. It's definitely a centerpiece. It's one of my highlights when I come in the museum. When I come in here with a visitor, first thing I do is I bring them over here and I show it to them because, man, it is so neat to look at. Well, it's really neat to look at. We added a, a motion detector that trips a, a, a calliope, which plays a, carny music and uh, the, uh, the squirrels go up the tree and the ducks go back and forth and uh, it, it's quite a little, uh, little experience. Great and something you can see when you're here at the National Farms Museum and Phil tell us how people get more information about the museum. Yeah. There's two ways of, uh, of visiting us. Uh, you can come here uh, in person, we're open seven days a week. Our new holiday hours are Sunday through Friday uh, from 9.30 to 5. And then on Saturdays, we've extended our hours from 9.30 to 7 o'clock. Uh, so that's an extra half an hour in the morning and a couple extra hours in the evening. Great. Uh, seven days a week, admission is free. Or you can visit us on our web and take a virtual tour of the museum at nationalfirearmsmuseum.org. And uh, we're upgrading that website as we speak and check back often because it's going to offer some really unique and diverse information on firearms here in the museum and in general as well. Phil Schreier, thank you for this week's Curator's Corner. Always a pleasure. Thank you.